as well as at the item levels. Okay. Activities and maintenance uh, notifications are used to record work performed and tasks are used to record work to be performed. Okay, that's the difference between activities and tasks. Uh, so just, you know, if you just looked at the English meaning, you won't be able to figure out what the difference is, but this is the sense in which they are using it. Which of the following can be a reference object for a maintenance notification? Functional location and equipment. Right. So you may say, why not, uh, you know, work center? If a work center is a machine, why not? Right. But in that case, it will also be an equipment and that will be the one which will be the reference object. Because when you say work center, you are more interested in the capacity and costing and those kinds of things, not as a technical object. Right. So if you've got a machine and which is also a work center, it will be really two different things in terms of data. Which of the following can track costs? Material, maintenance notification, maintenance order, task on the maintenance notification. Maintenance order, right? Maintenance order is the one that can track costs. Maintenance notification cannot. Uh, settlement of the maintenance order is not based on the object list associated with the order. True, it's not. Right? So one of the slides, for example, uh, it says that the object list does not control the order. See, the point is this. Point is, you had a maintenance order. You incurred a lot of cost on the maintenance order. Right? Now, obviously, suppose you have to settle this order. One uh, commonsensical approach would be to say, yes, this maintenance was performed for objects A, B, and C. So, we should allocate the cost to the objects A, B, and C. That's one way of looking at it. But what the book says is, that's not, the objects are there. You did something for it. But the settlement rule is what controls how the costs are allocated. The object list doesn't have a role to play there. Okay, So the object list is there purely for technical purposes. To tell people what are the objects and what each should be done. That's all. In terms of cost allocation and so on, that is defined completely different. Okay, There is no connection between the two. Right? So that is the sense in which the, the slides say it doesn't control the order. The object list doesn't control the order. It's not used for cost accounting or controlling purposes. Okay, and they've put, thankfully, they've put the control in double quotes so that we know that uh, it's, it's different, the term is being used differently. Uh, which of the following are true for stock material usage in maintenance orders? Right? ABD. We, we discussed that order can be released even if material is not available. Right? Because it's a maintenance order, there may be something you can do even without the material. So we saw that. And depending on customizing, the reservation can be done at order creation or at release. Right? That is, when does the material reservation take place? You can customize as to when that's going to happen. Uh, and unplanned material issue occurs with reference to the reservation. That doesn't make sense. Because if it's unplanned, there cannot be a reservation. So how can you do it on the basis of the reservation? And of course, planned issue occurs with reference to the reservation. Okay. An unplanned issue occurs with reference to what? The order. Order is the reference object for that. Okay, 24. Which of the following are true for non stock material usage in maintenance orders? Okay. So, the BCD is the correct answer. The point is that this is a maintenance order. See, normally we think of material issue and stuff happening. I know after the order is released, you can issue the material, right? But here you may think, well, Shouldn't we first procure the material before we release the order? Right? Because this material is required for the order. Right? So it may appear that we need to first get the material and then release the order. But the point is, it's for non-stock and the material is for the order. If you don't even release the order, the material is not needed. Right? The material is needed only if the order is released. Right? What if you create the order, get the material and never release the order? The material is not needed at all. Right? So that is why release of the order is the one that talks that starts the process of procurement. Okay, so that's what this is talking about. So that's why A is not right. 
materials are first procured before the order is released? No. Only after the order is released, the procurement process even begins. Okay, the purchase order item has the maintenance order as the account assignment object. Yes, because it's being procured for consumption. Under certain conditions, posting to invoice can affect the assignment of cost to maintenance order. Under what conditions? So what is C saying? If C is true, then we should be able to say what conditions, right? I think it's when, depending on the, how you set it up, when you want the settlement done. You want it to be either direct settlement or you want it to be summarized. When there is a difference in the invoice. Difference. When there is an invoice variance, that is what it is. Right? Because at the time you receive the goods, you would have already put this cost on this order. Right? When you receive the goods, the goods were, this is bought for consumption. Right? And you gave that as the account assignment object. So when you get the goods, when you have the goods received, you will already allocate that cost to that order. Okay? So this will change only if at the time the invoice comes, there is a difference. Okay? There is a price difference in the invoice. For example, let's say the invoice price is lower than what your original uh, purchase order was, right? but you had already charged the uh, order based on the purchase order price because that's what you thought is going to apply but the invoice price came out, came out lower so you'll adjust it or alternately if the invoice price comes out higher then you'll again have to adjust it of course assuming that you agree to that high price with the vendor. Okay. So that's the situation we're talking about. Okay, this is the previous step actually. Here is when you actually debited it and here is where you might adjust it. So this happens before this day. I've given it in a different order. Okay, where are cost elements assigned to value categories in customizing? In customizing is where we say these are the cost elements that belong to this category. Okay, what I'm talking about is... Um, Okay, so these are the value categories, internal service, external service, warehouse issue, right? But the, we want to say, well, which cost elements are considered as internal service? Which cost elements are considered as external service, right? So this you set up in customizing and then after that, when the cost elements actually come, the system can automatically do this aggregation for us. <clears throat> okay, what has to be done for maintenance orders to be released automatically on creation? Well, you set the flag, release immediately flag for this order type in customizing. Or, or yeah, right. Well, for from maintenance plans and so on. Orders resulting from maintenance plans are generally said to be released automatically on creation. Okay. Which of the following steps can be done once a maintenance order is released? All of these. You can uh, enter confirmations, right? For any order, you can enter confirmations only after the order is released. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Uh, you can issue materials and you can print the job ticket, right? Why is B not true? It would have been done before. Before you even released it, you would have probably done it. Okay, 29 is cats. No, techo is a status. So this is the, which component can be used to enter confirmations. Techo is a state that the order reaches when it is technically complete. Okay, 30, which of the following can occur even after an order has the status of techo? B and C. Why is A not true? If it's a purchase order, it's already been sent. So there's no op option to delete the purchase order. Uh, you can set the flag for deletion of purchase requisitions. 
not raw hops. It's for requisitions that you can delete. Meaning you created a requisition thinking you're going to need the material, but it's complete. So you don't need the material, so you can delete those requisitions. Okay, you can close open reservations, you can receive costs. You can't enter tasks, obviously, because the order is complete. And a task says there's some more work to be done, which means it's not complete. I do not remember this. I remember every time if we set technical condition, then we will be on the method done by the system. Close open reservations is automatic. Okay. So just at the same time when we set tackle, then it will be done by the system. However, C should be done manually. But you know, uh, even after tackle, we will is automatic. Yeah, but yeah. the word he says can occur. It can occur. <laughs> okay. How it occurs is the is the point. Yeah. Thirty one. Which of the following documents is not part of the documentation flow for maintenance order? Billing document, obviously, because it's not part of that scene at all. We are not billing anybody. This is plant maintenance. Right. Billing document will come into play only if you are talking about external. Customer service. Uh, which of the following steps in the processing of a service order can be automated? Okay, settlement and creation of the billing document. Okay, it just says in the process flow, you see the last three things can be automated. So it's that. Which of the following represents a non-revenue bearing service order? Okay, it's A and C, but there's one small scope for confusion here. Right, when we say service order, in this chapter we are referring to customer service. Okay, that's not clear sometimes. Right, so when we say service order in SAP in general, you are referring to external customer service, which is revenue bearing. Right, so internal plant maintenance and so on, they're called maintenance orders. It's not called a service. Okay, so implicitly this is service, external service. Uh, and why is A not Non-revenue bearing. You're saying sales order item. Shouldn't it be getting revenue? The revenue goes to the sales order. Here we are talking about revenue bearing service order. Right? So this is not a revenue bearing service order. Revenue is not coming to the service order. It's going to the sales order. So that is why A is correct. Uh, a customer service order. Yeah. Yeah. Customer service order plays directly. Well, that would be revenue bearing. Because they place the order and that order will actually get revenue. Service work resulting from repair and return processing, same thing, like A. That goes to, yeah, the repair order. Uh, in connection with settlement of service orders, which of the following statements? Yeah. Yeah, actually it can be. No, service order, no. Service order is external customer service order, right? Yeah, it's not a maintenance order. So here you will not... Uh, okay. Uh, in connection with settlement, which of the following statements are true? Uh, cost and revenues are first allocated to the service order before further settlement. Not always. Right? May not be always because revenues may not be allocated to the service order. If the service order is non-revenue bearing, then revenue may not be allocated. So this is not always true. This is sometimes true. But this is always true. Right? Costs are always first allocated. Uh, and then, uh, but revenues need not necessarily be first allocated. And for revenue bearing, both are allocated. So really what we are talking about is this particular slide here. Right? So this is the one we are talking about. Right? So for uh, revenue bearing service orders, both costs and revenues go to the order, then it's settled. Non-revenue bearing, the costs go here, but the revenues go to the, the document which actually gets the revenue. And then it's settled. Okay, really, this is the slide I'm talking about there. Okay, in the case of service orders requiring 
procurement of external services, service entry and service acceptance. Right? That uh, you enter the services performed and then you have to accept the services performed. Only then uh, the, pro the, the further processes can proceed. Which document triggers the creation of a billing document? A billing request. Right? And a billing request is what? It's sort of an, uh, it's a form of sales order. Right? It's an internal sales order, you could say, or a pseudo sales order. Using it just so that you can plug into the billing, uh, billing uh, process of the sales and distribution thing. Right. And 37, dynamic items are first created before the above document can be generated. Right. What, what, what are these dynamic items? Exactly. Right. So this is a service order. That means in order to satisfy that, a lot of expenses got incurred. Right. Now we are going to bill the customer for all of those expenses. So those are the dynamic items. So we go back and say, okay, what are all the expenses we incurred in doing this? Pull it all in and then, right? So we may be telling the customer, your charge is going to be $100 plus actual expenses. Well, those actual expenses are the dynamic items. Mm -hmm. Thirty-four. Okay. Yeah, thirty-four is, uh, okay. B says costs are first allocated to the service order, but revenues need not necessarily be so allocated. And it says for revenue bearing, both costs and revenues, all right? So I'm really just referring to this particular slide here. Nothing else. Okay, so here's a non-revenue bearing order. Right? The costs are going to the order, revenues are going to the order. Sorry, this is a revenue bearing service order. And then it's set it for. Whereas here, you see this is non-revenue bearing, costs are going to the order. If revenue is going to the the super order from which this result. Okay. Okay. So that completes our.